Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PBC, and joining me today is Estonian forward Henry Drell. What's going on, Henry? Hey, what's up? What's up? Not too much, man. I just wanted to uh, say congrats on uh, putting your name in the 2020 draft pool here. And I know it's uh, definitely a weird time for you to be trying to navigate this process. Uh, and I know you tested the waters last year as well. You want to maybe, you know, quickly speak to what the difference is between your experience last year and, you know, how you're trying to navigate it this year. I mean, this year is way different because of this uh COVID-19 situations, but, uh, but yeah, last year I went to, uh, to USA first time in my life. I had a couple of workouts, had workouts with my agency and, uh, it was smooth, you know, it was great, but now it's kind of strange. You got to talk with the teams through zoom, through video, you cannot show yourself, you, you cannot show your skills. So it's, it's strange times going on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, not, not, you know, ideal as far as being able to like get there in person and kind of talk to teams and be in their facility working out or do a combine or anything like that. But, you know, seems like you're trying to make the best of it here and uh, had an opportunity to talk to some teams. So that's good. Um, and what we wanted to do was kind of do something different here. And uh, since you do have so much downtime and since there's still a few months to the draft and you can't travel to the States right now and do what you normally would be doing. Figured we would just break down some game film together, kind of talk through some areas of your game that translate really cleanly, or maybe that you've made some strides in year over year, some other areas where you could maybe stand to improve a little bit, all in hopes of eventually, you know, making that upward trajectory into being an NBA player one day. Yeah, why not? All right. Sounds good. So, when we flip over to the film here, um, I believe in the past uh, you may have been no known more as kind of like a skilled jumbo sized perimeter wing with like ball skills and shooting. And one of the areas that you wanted to improve on previously from your time, uh, you know, coming up in Bamberg's uh, system with the young pikes and everything was, you know, your ability to get to the rim with strength and kind of like, combat this physicality, right? And I think that's an area that we saw some strides in this year in Italy. So that's what we're gonna start with here. So uh, this first clip, we're gonna see you catch it out on the wing here. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a little bit of a size advantage here on the wing. And I think you do a lot of the time, right? Cause you're, you're measuring in at like six, nine now, correct? Yeah, yeah. So what's your kind of mentality when, you know, a guy, He's pressing you a little bit out past the three-point line here. What's your mentality in trying to break a guy like this down off the dribble, and how do you think you've improved on that uh, over the past year or so? I mean, uh, in this situation, I kind of, you know, I was kind of flowing, you know. This game, I had, uh, I had a great game this game, and, uh, you know, I felt it like it was, it was my time right now because, because they switched it. I could have passed it down low. Yeah. But I don't know, he he was kind of pressing me, so I, mm -hmm. I did like two hesies or I know two moves down there, hey. And then, you know, I just kind of went went on with that. And uh, yeah, I just I just had to float there. I don't know, it was just kind of my instincts down there playing. Yeah, for sure. And the, the flow is a good way to describe this, right? Like, you know, you're pounding the ball for a little bit, but you're always under control. You're just kind of sizing the guy up and you know, choosing that exact moment to attack. And when you do, you're really assertive with it and you beat him around the corner here. And then mm -hmm. there's this help side rim protection is coming, but I think this is where your length really comes into play, right? Like you have that length to get up over that help side rim protector and finish with the smooth finger roll. Yeah, yeah. This guy is 7'2". And, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah, I was just, you know, it's just kind of flow down there. I don't know. I could have bashed it to the right, but you know, it's just yeah, but that that's true. But you know, I think I'll take a six foot nine fluid athlete finishing at the rim as opposed to kicking it out for a mid ranger, right? So this yeah. was, this was a good take for sure, and I think you've definitely shown some strides there. I know you know it's like been a tough adjustment. Your team didn't have a great year. You, some of your efficiency numbers 
weren't like what you'd like them to be. But I think mm-hmm. there's definitely something to take away here is that, you know, you've shown up some better assertiveness and better strength and physicality in getting to the rim like this. Uh, you want to maybe just talk me through this one. I feel like this is kind of similar, but you just hit this guy more quickly with just a quick rip move instead of dribbling and uh, sizing him up this time, right? Yeah, uh, actually, before this uh, before this game, you know, I know this guy who's guarding me, and then uh, the coaches told told us whoever is like whoever is he guarding, you need to attack him. So okay. you can see me. He's he's kind of. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to say something bad, but he's kind of slow. But he's a very good player. He's smart, yeah. but he's kind of slow. So right. I, I, I try to, uh, I try to use my uh, my quickness and my length through this, and uh, you know, it was successful down there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you know that that's a good point right there on kind of knowing personnel, right? Like knowing yeah. the scouting report and like paying attention to those kind of things, and then noticing how he's positioned on you, right? Like you're out, you know, out way past the three point line. He's pressing up on you quite a bit. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. did you end up deciding to go left here because of uh, the way he was positioned and kind of all this off ball action over here, kind of diverting the help side that way? Or like, did, you know, what were you, what were you seeing there? Yeah, because, you know, everybody on the right side is busy with their men. So no yeah. help side down there. So I was just, left hand why not and uh, you know mostly i like to go left side so i was using this strength to to finish it yeah i mean that's just a great take and that guy uh the guy car- covering the guy in the corner is really hugging his man too so that just creates a nice little alley there for you and you kind of see it and take advantage of it and mm-hmm. you know, finish through a little bit of contact at the end so just really like to see that and you've made some improvements with that Now this one, you're again ISO'd out on the wing. This is very similar to that uh, that first play. So don't really need to go totally in depth on this one again, but like you have the option again to pass it to the post, kind of, you know, put it above your head and then are decisive and just rip past them. Uh, mm-hmm. do you think you've gotten better at, if we pause it right about here, at kind of like, you know, using your uh, arms a little bit on these drives to kind of combat some physicality without, you know, without charging, but kind of using your arm to like create a little bit of space and route to the basket. Yeah, yeah, I think it comes also through the through the body weight. You know, I've gained yeah. this year. I gained uh, nearly ten kilos. I don't know how many pounds is that, but uh, uh, I think it comes. Uh, it it also helps me there, and also. Uh, I mean that the refs don't see this anyway if it would be a charge so you know it's a smart move to do there oh for sure yeah it's just subtle right like he, yeah. he's kind of bumping into you and you're giving it back a little bit just, you uh-huh. know jostling there and i think you know when you were younger and before you gained uh that weight you know you you might have like been less likely to get the whole way to the cup here and might have had to pull up or something but now yeah. stronger and more assertive right Exactly. So I think that's really going to help you as you uh, keep making these steps in your career and progress toward the NBA. Now we've got one more clip here where you have a little side pick and roll action. And I, I, you've got some really creative stuff going on here. So I'd like maybe you to talk me through from the top of the play here what, what's going on in this action and what you're seeing and how you dissect everything. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's uh, it's original place to come off the stagger and to shoot yeah. it, you know, yeah. for a shooter. And, uh, you know, he's just, I, I didn't get that space clearly. Or, yeah. And then uh, then I, I, I called my big man to rescreen and they, I know they hedged, like they faked hedge. You yeah. know, they don't, they don't come two step out, they fake hedge. Right. So I, I knew it before, so you got to. I pulled it back and immediately attacked because the big man is not ready. And you look at the help side; nobody's on the help side, so I got a free, uh, so I got a free layup down there. Yeah, that was super creative. Like I, I think you read everything exactly right up to this point. You get to here, and like you said, that little, you know, that little dribble back, right? The little kind of like hang dribble, and then all of a sudden you explode toward the rim. I think that's just 
you know, was really creative, got this big man off balance. And then you have this little goofy foot layup here at the end, right? Where you jump off your left foot and finish with the right left hand. Um, did you do that on purpose or was that just kind of in the flow of things? No. I feel like that's really good for kind of throwing off the timing of uh, rim protectors, right? Yeah, I know. I think it just uh, came also through instincts. You know, I, I wasn't, uh, I knew because he was behind me. If I go dunk that, probably he will, you know, he was, he was exactly behind me. So yeah, I think it, it was just, you know, through the, through the feeling that I, you know, I don't even know how to say this, but it was just the feeling down there and uh, and it looked, yeah, it looked pretty goofy down there, yeah. No, but that's like, I use goofy in a good sense there because that's no, like, yeah. like the opposite foot of what you normally use when you're shooting a left-handed layup. But, you know, some of these really crafty players that are so successful and like knifing through the paint and finishing over big men are really good at using that opposite foot and like kind of throwing them off and like, the big men are usually trying to time out their blocks and anticipate you jumping off the other foot there. And you just kind of, you know, really stealthily get it up there quick. Right. So that was just a really nice move. So I think now we're going to move to, uh, so this is an area on the offensive end in your jump shooting from deep where, you know, you've always been a really skilled shooter. You have good form and you know, kind of having that combination of the size and length with your shooting gives you that ability to shoot over guys, right? Like you often have a few inches and can kind of pull up anywhere. Uh, um, what we're going to touch on here real quick is as I bring the film back up, um, you know, as you've made this transition to uh, Italy A1 this year in Syria, um, some of the jump shooting numbers have gone down a little bit. Uh, and some of these are in like spot up situations here. You catch it in the corner, everything mm. looks pretty good, but you struggled a little bit from the field this year, uh, in shooting threes. Do you, do you think there's anything specifically to that? Do you think it was just, uh, you know, going up a little against better competition that has a little more length or maybe you growing into your body a little bit and like getting stronger and getting taller and just kind of adjusting a little bit or. You know, what do you think that is there? Because I think you are a good shooter, but it just didn't bear through in the numbers this year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, the the level, of course, went uh, went up. You know, Syria is, uh, is, not, a, is not a joke. And uh, also, sometimes I'm off the rhythm, you know. For example, this shot, you know, it's, it's kind of, it was kind of, I shouldn't supposed to shoot it. It was kind of a bad decision. So sometimes, uh, sometimes the you know self doubt and this kick in and uh, and kind of confidence wise uh, might sometimes go off. But uh, otherwise, I feel like when I'm in the rhythm, I can knock this shot down and uh, and uh, yeah. So you so you feel like maybe it's just a little bit of a shot, more of a shot selection thing, and just like you know, taking a, some tough ones and maybe if you can just hone up your shot selection and just get a little more yeah. confident and a little bit more in rhythm that, you know, it'll come back. And I, I, I tend to agree because, you know, the shooting form itself looks good and like you've been a good shooter throughout your life. So, you know, I feel confident that, you know, you've added a little bit more strength in getting to the rim and like we were going over before, and you have the baseline shooting there and that maybe it was just a little bit of an adjustment this year and that yeah. you have the indicators to kind of move back upward in your efficiency going forward. Right. Yeah. Before we move off to the uh, defensive side of the ball, who would you say you kind of uh, like model your game after on the offensive end? Are there any NBA players that come to mind? I know you've mentioned uh, Paul George as a guy that you like to yeah. watch a little bit and in him being kind of similar to you, like a six, nine ish perimeter player, right? Is there any, anyone else that comes to mind? I mean, kind of all these, you know, lengthy forwards, you know, I like this guy also a peer shooter, my, uh, my neighbor country, the guy, uh, Davis Perdans, you know, yeah. I've got a lot of, a lot of comments that, uh, I play like him and, uh, you know, my shooting form is like kind of him. Then, you know, of course, Jason Tatum, this long, he's, uh, he's long, he's tough. 
And you know all these uh, all these long players, like you said, Paul George, a cool coach, you know, yeah. and uh, you know Reggie Miller back at the, back at the time, you know, skinny, long, and shooting shooting the ball. So yeah, I like these kind of players, but yeah. uh, mostly I'm all in my game after this uh, Durant and uh, Paul George, you know, two big stars. Their moves are nice. So yeah. Did you watch some of the Last Dance Michael Jordan documentary? As you mentioned oh, yeah. coach and Reggie Miller there. Did you you t- tune into that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I watched it all. Yeah, that was a good way to spend the quarantine time as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool. So let's move over to the defensive side of the ball now here. And I think what we're going to touch on again is an area of your game that has developed a little bit. And we're going to hit on some uh, – help side rim protection. So we'll start with this first play back from the top. Uh, So this guy starts driving down the middle here. Um, Do you want to maybe speak to your ability to kind of like, you know, play the help side and sometimes you're guarding big, sometimes you're guarding guys out on the wing, but it seems like you have a good gauge for when one of your teammates gets blown by, you're able to kind of step in and have the length to deter shots at the rim. Uh, so let me bring this uh, bring this film back up, and we'll start it right here. You want to maybe talk me through this one real quick? Uh, show me the clip. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, you know, it was kind of, you know, I got a uh, we switched with the big guy, and I kind of was on the big big position down there, and uh, I just saw my my teammate going uh, was you know needed help. And uh, it just came to me, you know, so I just uh, felt like I should go and, uh, you know, through, I was kind of taller than him also. So I was just jumping down there and uh, got the ball. Yeah. And it was good that you, you know, you had the right reaction to block it with your left hand here and go, go pretty straight up. And Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, your the fact that you spoke earlier about how you added strength makes it a little bit more, gives you a little bit more credibility to be able to cover some big guys uh, at the beginning of possessions, right? Like this guy gets an offensive board, but you're able to make it kind of tough for him to go straight back up. And so your ability to, you know, hang with these big guys in spot moments, you know, then you can kind of jump over and help when guys drive here as well. So, you know, if you aren't able to hang with that big guy, maybe they would have swung it around and tried to ISO you in the post, but they didn't because you've gotten a little stronger and you have the length to combat it. Right. Yeah. So really nice job there on the help. And we're going to move on to another play now. So this one is a little bit more on ball, right? So we'll start this one back from the top. So you firstly, you spoke about Tatum earlier, right? Uh, Jason Tatum is known as one of the better nail defenders in the NBA, which is is exactly what you're doing here is helping at the nail, right? That's the first thing yeah. you do, cut off that drive, which I think is an underrated, you know, beginning part of this play and an underrated skill defensively in basketball. Uh, is that something that your coach uh, at Pissarro preaches uh, kind of when you're on the you know, opposite wing and someone's driving in toward the paint to kind of step in and help with the nail and bounce back out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was, a uh, it was our job to do this. It's a, uh, you know, they call it plug. You got a plug there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was plugging down there and, uh, and exactly like we wanted, he, he passed to me, he passed to my guy and then it's just one-on-one closeouts and you got to stay, you got to stay there solid. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, good job with the short, you know, short close there. It seems like he might have a step on you for a second if we pause it right here, right? Like he starts mm-hmm. attacking to the right. You're kind of leaning a little, but you do a really good job with your recovery there, right? Like you get there quickly, you move pretty well for your size, and then you have the length at the end, you know, to recover and get finish it off with a little bit of a deflection there and a block, right? Yeah. Do you think you uh, – I guess on the defensive end, how many positions do you think you can guard? Because it seems like now that you've added some weight, that gives you some positional versatility to cover both out on the perimeter and down low. So how many positions do you think you could theoretically guard when you eventually make the jump to the NBA? Uh, I think, you know, I was guarding uh, this year in uh, in Italy, I was guarding one to four. And yeah. uh, I think I can, uh, I can guard one to four guys. 
if uh, if I get stronger, if I have more muscle, uh, maybe even a five guy. But uh, you know, one to four is uh, just it could be it could be my thing. You know, the versatility in defense and in offense. And, yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do, you know. I can I can press uh, the guards with my length and uh, and uh, be quicker than the four guys. So yeah, for sure. And like that kind of defensive versatility is what teams are looking for in the modern NBA, right? They want guys who have size that can play on the perimeter or slide down positions and play down low, switch on defense. So you know you're still really young and you're showing some flashes of you know, the ability to hold up guarding multiple positions, which I think would be really enticing for NBA teams. And the last sort of defensive clip we're going to show here is a little chase down block, which, I mean, this had to feel good, right? Like that, that's, a, that's a, you know, it's a, you guys are having a tough game. You're down quite a bit, but this had to feel great to pin this one, right? No, definitely. Definitely. And I think this really highlights, you know, because if we stop it right at the top of the play, as soon as the turnover happens, you know, right here, you, you're you pretty even with the guy right now, but he has a little bit of a jump on you and you catch him the whole way from back here. I mean, that shows your sort of speed in the open court and using your stride length and then, you know, having the timing to time that out and get up there and block it. I mean, I think you know, just seeing you move like this at your size in and of itself is going to be really alluring to NBA teams, right? I mean, like, yeah. not a lot of guys that are six foot nine and can move like that so fluidly, right? Yeah, no, I, I remember the exact play. And I remember when he, when they turned over the ball, I, I knew I'm going to block this guy yeah. because I knew I'm, I'm quicker than him and uh, I can cover this ground easily. Yeah, man. And like having that confidence too, right? Like you seem very confident in your game and what you bring to the table. And it definitely showed out on this play and just, you know, it was definitely a tough year, your first year in Serie A, but like you still have that confidence. And I feel like, you know, as you continue progressing forward in your career, maintaining that confidence, you know, in spite of any like struggles that come along the way, I think it's going to be important for continued growth and development. Yeah. So I think next we are moving on to maybe one more uh, one more piece of rim protection here. So there's a lot of off-ball movement here by this other team, a lot of ball movement, little pick and roll action. And this I really love this one because this is this is the type of help side defense that is gonna come about a lot in the NBA. So you wanna maybe talk me through this one? Yeah, you know, my first coach in Pesaro uh, always, always put me, uh, always pushed us, the whole team, to play help side defense. And this was exactly the, exactly the, the moment and the situation what we did in practices. So it was just, it was just came kind of naturally down there that I had to go and, uh, and just, yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, you, you see the pick and roll starting to develop here, right? So, like, when you're weak side, oh, actually, you end up being strong side because they drive mm -hmm. your direction. But when you see a pick and roll coming this way, you know, when you're in this slot right here, what are you trying to read, right? Like, what are the options in the pick and roll that you're sort of seeing develop and that you're trying to kind of play between and combat here? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just uh, trying to cover my men. And trying to like help him also because whenever it comes to skip pass, then I can recover there. But uh, but now I see that my man is extremely late, so I just mm -hmm. I just went there, and then my man have to recover to my man. Then my yeah. then my teammate has to recover to my 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 defensive player. Right. So like you're you're playing two between your guy in the corner, and then this roll man kind of opens up and. You know, you have your little guard here that's trying to, like, you know, catch up to him and combat him. So is that, you know, when you see him put his arm up and kind of seal and dive like this, does that kind of signal to you, like, all right, I should start sliding yeah. over, over that way? Yeah, for sure. Because it's, uh, uh, it's you know, <clears throat> better get, uh, better go and help on the layup than uh, on the three-pointer, you know, because layup is way easier than three-pointer. So I was just took this option. 
Right. And like, you have to be able to trust your teammates that if you slide in there and help that they'll X out for you and get to the yeah. and like kind of rotate. So really nice job of reading that, seeing it develop and then getting up there and getting the block without fouling. So the last area we're going to touch on is a potential improvement area defensively. So I think maybe one of the biggest differences in, you know, making this transition to uh, first division Italy is, you know, guarding these guys out on the perimeter and trying to keep them in front of you. Right. So, you know, on this one, the guy gives you a little bit of a nice behind the back move kind of catches you on that. And then you get caught on his side and he gets a little easy, easy route to the rim and then a similar sort of thing here, right? Like there's a little pick and roll action going on to start this play. And, you know, he just kind of knocks you off your spot and you kind of fall out of balance and he's able to pull up on you here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that, I guess, you know, you've always been known as being a really fluid athlete at 6'9", uh, but it's, it's a huge difference when you move on from playing in like, uh, you know, when you're on the Young Pikes playing against other youth teams and then moving up to first division Italy has, do you think that this, you know, and kind of going through these struggles and like getting used to covering guys on, on the perimeter and kind of, you know, seeing how tough it can be sometimes is going to be helpful for you and your growth and development going forward. And that this is an area you can work on as you're, you know, training for the draft yeah definitely you know it was it was a good year to adjust the real game you know and uh yeah. this this shows that uh here you know the guys the guy the guy is quicker than me and uh, he just he just gets me there but the first clip you know i remember this it's against uh, milos Teodosic, one of the best players in europe and yeah. uh, you know i was uh, there you know i, I went to reach yeah. I went to reach Milos the dosage, which is uh, real silly, and uh, and you know I think uh, if I would have stayed solid, uh, nothing would have happened down there. But uh, you know I just you know kind of move on and then just to reach for no reason. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is not smart for me, but uh, but yeah, yeah, and like that's a guy who very recently played in the NBA for a short yeah. period, right? So you know. We talked about your, you know, your fluidity and everything and your ability to cover multiple positions. Uh, but you're just going to have to kind of, you know, continue to just work on your footwork and hone up your decision making on the defensive end too, right? Like how you said you reached and maybe shouldn't. Just yeah. kind of making sure that you lock in and are smart and disciplined when you kind of have to cover these smaller uh, creative guards, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's all the film that I have, man. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to run through that. I think we touched on, you know, some aspects of your game that have shown improvement this year. Some that maybe, you know, you had some struggles in moving up to a really, really good league, one of the better leagues in the world. But, you know, that's going to happen. You're a young player on, you know, a team that was struggling. You know, everyone goes through these types of things at some point in your career. And I think, you know, you can take away a lot of lessons from that as you continue to hone your craft and kind of mold your game into what you eventually see it being at the NBA level. Right. Yeah. So before we wrap up here, just wanted to kind of kick it back to you. And since you're not able to like go to a combine or go work out in teams facilities this year, or travel to the States at all, just kind of wanted to give you the stage to uh, relate to NBA teams. Who is Henry Drell? And if they bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? You know, they can expect me to work hard every day, to push myself every day, to be a good teammate and to be friendly with everybody. And of course, uh, they can expect 6'9", uh, uh, lengthy forwards, uh, who's, uh, who's going to get you whatever you need. So whenever coach wants me to put me on the four, I can play four. And uh, whenever he wants me to bring out the ball, bring on the ball, you know, down the court, I can bring down the down the ball also. So, so yeah, this is uh, this is who I am, and uh, I'm hoping that somebody somebody likes me. Good stuff, man. Yeah, every team is looking for skilled, versatile, you know, wings or forwards, right? So. Uh, I think teams are going to be intrigued. I know a few have called you already and you've had some chance to speak with a few teams already in this process. 
And I wish you the best of luck going forward as you continue to navigate this over the, ne- the next few months here. And I'll definitely be rooting for you as you, you know, keep working toward an eventual career in the NBA. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Stay safe.